This is a DeLorean toy made by Playmobil, and this is the 3D version I made in Premiere Pro. Let me show you the camera, lights, and gear I used to capture the raw footage, and then I will show you how to create this digitized 3D scan look just with Premiere Pro effects. Here's the story. Last year, I needed to create a 3D scan effect for my latest film, The Street Photographer. At the beginning of this movie, the main character lives in the year 2065, and he telepathically opens his holographic tablet displaying a 200 years old camera. I did some research and I found a tutorial made by Chris Antoinette, which is pretty good, but I wanted to make my own version with studio lights. So here you have it, super easy step-by-step step, and stay tuned until the end of this video to see a few different examples with the final results. I shot this video with the Sony FX3 and with the Sony 50mm f1.2 lens. Now, you do not need the f1.2, but I will recommend you to still use a 50 because the Nifty 50 has the most comparable field of view to a human eye. Now, for camera settings, I have my FX3 set to UHD 4K at 24p and I used PP11 with S-Cine tone to keep nice colors out of the box so I wouldn't have to color grade much in post. Shutter speed is typically double your frame rate, so I set mine at 1 60th of a second, which is a bit more than double to minimize motion blur. And my 50th aperture was closed down to f11 to make sure the whole DeLorean was within the depth of field once focused. ISO depends on the power settings of your light sources, so I had mine set to 1000 to stay properly exposed. Lighting setup. I used three light sources. Just so you know, you do not need these specific light sources and modifiers, but these are the ones I had in hand. Anything comparable will do the job just fine. First, a key light to light up the DeLorean, which was a newer SL60W with a 3x4 shallow softbox made by Westcott. Second, I used a newer 60W with an aperture Fresnel 2x lens mount with barn doors to kill any shadows casted by the key light and to reveal all details under the car. Mind you that the 60W is no longer in production, but the newer SL60W is basically the same light. And third, I used another 60W without reflector to light up my green screen. Green screen. Any green screen will do the job. Just make sure it is big enough to cover the entire background you see on your camera's frame behind your subject. That's it. I used a newer 2-in-1 chroma key green blue collapsible backdrop, which is pretty cheap. But again, any green screen you can find will work. As for the turntable to rotate the DeLorean, I used a ComSim Professional 360 degree rotating turntable in white. Color doesn't matter, but if you are going to use it for product photography in the future, white is more universal to shoot most kinds of products. Play with the settings until you find a mid-range speed that doesn't rotate your object too fast nor too slow. And to hold up my DeLorean, I used a makeup bottle from my wife wrapped around with some 2 inches wide fluorescent green gaffer's tape made by Gaffer Power. Links to all these products in the description below. Bonus accessory, table stand. The Kirk Low Pod is the best ultra low table tripod on the market, but they are very expensive and hard to find. It is made out of thick metal, it's heavy and has a nice rubberized handle and feet. You do not need one, of course, but it was reassuring to use when I shot my 120 years old Pony Premo 3 camera. I highly recommend you to get one if you have the budget because you can use it for countless other purposes like as a tripod stand over your car's dashboard, for example, as I used it in past videos. Okay, so this is the final result and I'm gonna tell you what I did to key out that green screen. First thing I want to let you know that I'm using two video tracks, my original footage on video track one and an adjustment layer on video track two for some noise reduction plugin. I'll tell you more about that later. First thing I want to do is I want to turn off the ultra key effect and the mask under opacity. So 
to let you know that the first thing I did is I drew a mask with a pen tool so that way I can focus on all the green pixels around the DeLorean and I wouldn't care about the corners of the video see that is some blue and yellow here and some black line so I don't need to worry about those if I draw a mask so I'm going to turn the opacity back on and that's the mask I'm going to click on it the mask one so you can see the outline then now I'm going to turn on the ultra key effect and I'm going to click away from that mask so let's go back and click on the video track one and now here all you need to do is go to your effects panel and type the word ultra and you'll find that ultra key effect and all you got to do is just drag and drop it on top of your video once when you do that you will see it under the effect controls panel here and you want to click on this eyedropper and take a sample of your green screen somewhere in here so that will bring the green color into your key color and that will be the color that the effect will key out now the settings i used and this is only for me and the settings may be different for you depending on the camera you use the settings you use on your camera the objects the lighting but the settings that work for me are this ones i used 45 for transparency one for highlight 46 for shadow 50 for tolerance and 10 for pedestal now i'm going to zoom to a 200 percent and I wanted to show you how that noise reduction works. And I hope you can see the difference. But these black pixels had some noise because I used ISO 1000. If I turn off this video track 2, you will see the before. And I'm not sure if you can see, but in this section of the car, you can see uh, a little bit of the noise. Also on the bumper, you can see some of that noise made by iso 1000 so i'm going to turn that um track back on and you can see the after so this is the before and after and even if we go and move forward a little bit you can see it on another sections of the car so this is the after and this is the before so i think it's much better so now i'm gonna go and show you the other effects we need to generate that 3d scan effect and let's check those next and now it's time to export this timeline with an alpha channel so we can preserve the transparency created by the ultra key effect so to do that uh, i am going to export this timeline i have right here it's called 3d scan delorean i only have one clip on it so i don't need an in and out point and in order to do that we can do it two ways we can go to file then we can click on export and media or we can just simply go to the export tab up here and now in the location i am going to select my desktop right here and then i am going to change the format to QuickTime. It is set to QuickTime, but you want to make sure you are on the QuickTime format. Now we need a preset. You can use Apple ProRes 444 Alpha HLG or Apple ProRes 444 with Alpha. If you don't see it in this menu, you can scroll all the way down. You can click on more presets. And here you can scroll down until you find it is uh, right here. Apple Press 444 with alpha, but make sure that you pick the one that says QuickTime because that's the format we are going to use. So click on that guy and click on the OK button. And now I am going to render. This is going to take about an hour or two, whatever it takes. And I will see you back when it's done so let's click on the export button see what happens one long angry line later 
So now what we need to do is import our newly created QuickTime file with an alpha channel. I already did that and I created a new timeline called 3D Scan the Learning Alpha Channel. So here's my file and it has a black background. So if you want to make sure that you have an alpha channel on it, you want to go to your wrench here and select transparency grid. So now there is some noise left over from the ultra key effect, but we're going to fix that pretty quickly here. So now I'm going to go to the wrench and I'm going to shut off that transparency grid. And now we're going to go to the effects panel and I am going to search for a, an effect called fine edges. So here it is, and I'm going to drop it on my file. And here's how we are going to fix that noise. I'm going to look for the fine edges effect under the effects control panel. And I'm going to check on the invert option. So now that noise is fixed. And the next setting I need to change is blend with original to 50. Okay. Next, we need to go back to our effects panel and find a different one called tint. So here it is. And I'm going to drop it on my file. Now, under the effects control panel, I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to map my whites to a different color. In this case, I'm going to go with the green. I like to check on only web colors to simplify the range of colors and I'm going to click on my greens and I like kind of this flashy green. I'm going to click on it, click OK. So here you have it. This is the full effect. I think it looks pretty cool. So now you can use this clip with all those effects onto a different timeline or you can simply export this onto a, a new QuickTime file with an alpha channel and use it on any projects you want. Like I told you, pretty easy stuff, huh? With the right equipment plus this Premiere Pro FX, you can basically create this digitized 3D scan effect in Premiere Pro for almost anything. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more audiovisual tricks. Thank you for watching and see you next time.